Hello, guys. So, our challenge is to choose one animal from the previous page that we would like to be set free and to write a letter to the owner of that animal or zoo. So, you can make up that if you like. If you'd like it to be an owner, like the black cat person, or you'd like it to be a zoo, that's totally up to you. Persuading them that this animal belongs in its natural habitat. Ooh, habitat, good word to describe an animal's natural environment. So, you've you should have seen the example persuasive letter, which is in your pack. Let's see if I can show you that. There it is. You can have a little read through that to help you. And you may choose to do some research about your animal to help you. If you'd really like to do a different animal, that's totally fine. Let's just go through this vocabulary together. My turn, your turn. Habitat. Natural. Healthy. Space. Environment. Captive, exercise, isolated, dependent, necessary, species, climate, diet. And there's some good sentence openers to help you here as well. We've got firstly, secondly, surely. Furthermore, in addition, for example, for instance, without a doubt, it is certain that, and you may want to end it with finally. Okay, so I'm looking forward to getting straight on with my letter. Let's just look through our success criteria too. So we're writing to persuade. We are writing to make our reader change their mind and do what you'd like them to do. And the best way to do that is to charm them. Don't be too, uh, and so the best way is to use the language of persuasion and argument, which is our success criteria three. So for instance, you might list things in power of three. You make sure all your information is factual and you make sure it, you, you say nice things to your reader to make them agree with you and also use some rhetorical questions. Remember, rhetorical questions are when you ask a question which you do not expect an answer to. For instance, don't you care about the lives of animals? Do they need to answer that? No. Does it get them thinking about whether they care about animals? Yes. So our success criteria are to use features of a letter. You're going to start with dear and your sincerely to keep it nice and formal. Follow the structure of a letter. Make sure you have an introduction. You have paragraphs for each different point and you have a concluding paragraph. You're using your language of persuasion and argument like we talked about. You're using your sentence openers, use the ones in your pack to help you if you need to. And your challenge is to use rhetorical questions with coordinating and subordinating conjunctions. For instance, if an exotic beast puts a human life in danger, that's one thing. But how can you bear to see a young cub like me incarcerated? Obviously that's written from the perspective of a cub. So let's get writing our letter. So, I'm going to start with dear. I've already put my address here. I looked up what the London Zoo address was here. If you'd like to choose something different, that's fine. Remember that goes on the right hand side. Okay, so dear, hmm, who am I gonna write it to? I'm gonna say dear sir, madam, because I don't know them. So I don't know whether they're a boy or a girl who I'm writing to at the zoo. I'm gonna start with a good little sentence opener. I'm gonna say to begin, and I'm gonna get in there with something positive about them. I'm gonna say, to get them on side, I'm gonna say, I would like to congratulate you on being such a, I'm gonna go for a compound adjective, well-respected. On being such a well-respected zoo. I am writing to alert you, you could say inform. I'm writing to alert you to my concerns about some of the, I want to use a bit of alliteration because it's always good to even do it in a letter. Creatures in your care because they look after the creatures, don't they? Now, I'm going to use a bit of uh, success criteria number three, rule of three. Three good words I could use to describe them. I'm going to say, as the kind, yeah, I would say they're pretty kind when I visited. The kind, well educated, yeah, because all the people looking after the creatures. Uh, tend to be really real experts on the creatures. So we know that they're well-educated. We know that there's lots of nice things happening at the zoo. 
well-educated and caring. Oh, I'm going to up-level zoo. I'm going to go for a synonym. Oh, it's a building. It's an institution. Fancy word to describe somewhere where lots of things happen. You are. I am positive you will take my ideas into account and make the necessary changes. So you're saying, oh, because I know you're so great, I know you will listen to me. Now, I'm going to choose another good sentence opener. I'm going to go for without a doubt. I'm going to say there is a place in our world to witness and experience some of the magical creatures which dwell all around us. Because actually, that's the lovely thing about a zoo. There's lots of positives to a zoo, isn't it? It's a chance to go and see creatures that we otherwise never would. So without a doubt, there is a place in our world to witness and experience oh, some of the magical creatures which dwell all around us. Ah, and I'm going to put a nice little, I'm going to meet my challenge, I'm going to put a nice little conjunction in there. However, comma, should we be a little more careful when deciding which animals to put in cages? Rhetorical question, because I'm going to go for the eagle. Okay, I'm going to go for this eagle. I'm going to say it's a golden eagle, uh, because they're a particular rare bird, which I'm very interested in. So that's my opening paragraph. I've said why I'm writing. Um, and I'd like to mention the eagle, so I'm going to say, I um, am writing to let you know my thoughts on the golden eagle, or oh, proper noun, so it needs capital letter at the beginning. The golden eagle being in captivity is a fancy word for saying that they're in cages. Captivity. Okay, that's my opening paragraph. Now, our second success criteria is to follow the structure of a letter. We, we have an introduction. We have paragraphs which are only about one thing. So my first paragraph was only about introducing the idea, okay? Um, now then, as this is my first point of my proper persuasive letter, I'm going to go for firstly. Firstly, although, nice little conjunction, make sure you're using your fanboys and your eyesore a wub up as much as possible. Firstly, although I think it is possible for land animals to have plenty of space within zoos, comma, I do not agree that the same can be said for birds. Because birds need all that extra space, don't they? Birds need all that extra room to fly to really feel, um, feel free and feel uh, like they can do all the things that they would do in the wild. Uh, now then, how could I describe the birds? I want to use rule of three, because that's my uh, success criteria number three. I want to use rule of three. I want to just use three words, and I'd like to use some alliteration. I'd like to use, I'm going to say, these majestic, marvellous, or magical, these majestic, marvellous, and mighty because I'd say the golden eagle is quite mighty. These majestic, marvellous, and mighty creatures cannot possibly know what it feels like to be a free bird without being able to soar. Nice powerful verb. Without being able to soar to the highest heights in the sky, again, nice bit of alliteration, and be among the clouds where they belong. We'll stop. The golden eagle, I'm not going to describe the golden eagle. I did a bit of research on them and I know that they are, I'm going to say that they, the golden eagle, a rare, exotic, and wild creature whose instinct is to hunt. So I'm going to say the gold, oh, I put gold, always worth reading through and checking. The golden eagle a re, is a rare, exotic, and wild creature whose instinct is to hunt from high above. Oh, I just realized I used a relative embedded clause there, whose instinct is to hunt from high above. Surely, I'm going to go for another one from my opener's bank. Surely... If they have evolved to hunt live rodents, 
uh, from above with their incredible eyesight, something else I learned from my research, we should respect this and put no limit on how high up they can fly because if you look at a bird cage actually there's bars at the top as well it's not like an animal cage where they go, just go all around the edges they're at the top to stop them flying too high okay that's all i'm going to model i expect you guys should probably have a few paragraphs with a few different points on your different reasons what could your other reasons be have a little think maybe um one of them is that they are some of these some golden eagles are supposed to live in America, so it might be a bit cold for them in the UK. Maybe uh, they don't get a chance to meet their mates that they would otherwise in the wild. Um, so you can, what you can do is you can come up with a different point for each different paragraph. And don't forget, obviously I haven't been able to because I haven't finished my letter. Don't forget to finish with yours sincerely at the end. Okay. Right. I think you should be able to come up with some really good persuasive letters there. Good luck with those, and I look forward to hearing about them. Well done, guys. Thank you.